So, I thought I'd give you uh, a bit of an update on uh, where I was and what I've been up to because we've reached an interesting point, really. And uh, here it is. This is our heating pad. It's turned on at the moment and it's got a 12 volt um, supply. 12 volts is pretty low, obviously. We want to plug this in and give it a sort of a 24 volt, uh, 240 volt supply. So at 12 volts, it will uh, heat up very slowly. It uh, takes about three to four minutes to get up to about 35 degrees, something like that. And as you saw, we had just turned it on and uh, the ambient room temperature is 21 degrees and it's now reading 28 degrees. So it's already starting to warm up. Yeah, you can feel that. And as you can see, it's perfectly safe to touch because uh, I'm touching it as it gets warm. Um, so it's amazingly simple, actually. <coughs> what I did with it was create this flexible plastic heating pad. And the way I did that was I took a piece of flexible plastic, in this case PET, and the reason I chose PET is because PET will withstand temperatures up to about 200, 250. And I put a couple of strips of copper tape along the top and bottom edge of the PET, so there and there. And then I covered it with a few layer of graphene um, coating, and then put another layer of PET on top of it to create my insulated flexible heating pad. So that heats up just beautifully, and that's all there is to it. So it's an amazingly simple, easy, cheap thing to do. Um, I actually just mechanically applied the graphite coating. Now, this um, particular substrate, and particular heating pad, as I say, has a limitation on the uh, amount of heat it can actually generate, uh, and that limitation is to do with the base material. So if we change the base material, then we can change the um, heat level to which it can go to. Um, the same process of heating it is going to be applied, that is, you just stick a voltage across it. And as you can see, I literally just put a voltage across those two points and let it heat up. It's only an experiment, it takes a little time to do it, so it's not going to blow up or fry everything. But it will continue to heat as long as that um, current is applied. So we're going to need to put some kind of control circuitry in there, but that's the heating element. Now, in order to raise the um, performance of this heating element, then we need to raise the performance of the base material that we put it on. As I said, that was just uh, PET, but there's also this stuff. Now, this is capped on tape, and capped on tape will withstand a temperature up to about 400 degrees, which means that uh, running it at uh, constantly at 200 degrees is going to be no real problem if that's the baseline material that we run it with. And it's the same process. It's a bit difficult to manage the capped on because it's so thin, but there is a capped on tape flexible heating element. And all I've done, same thing, copper strip either side and then our few layer graphene um, flake in, uh, in between and that does exactly the same thing. You connect up the two tabs, put on a current and that heats up at about the same rate. Now, the reason it's quite cool is because there's no binders in this. It's just been applied as a, as a graphene layer. There's no glue, no binders, nothing. It sticks really well. Um, having no binders means that there's nothing to crack or, crack or burn away or break. We can flex it as much as we like. But clearly we have to do some testing on that. That is, flex it many, many times and make sure that it still runs despite having something like 10,000 flexes or something like that. But um, those are the two sort of basic plastic flexible heating elements. Uh, we're looking at something else. Now there's something else. I really like, um, I think it's absolutely bizarre and brilliant and I just love it. Ah. And here it is. <laughs> this is a lump of stone. It's actually a bit of granite. And um, as you can see, it's coated really, really nicely. So, same thing, I put two strips of copper down to act as my um, connection points. Then I put my graphene layer on the top of the stone. And when I plug that in, that heats up. And the limitation on it heating up is actually not to do with the um, substrate in this case, because the substrate is granite, so it's going to heat up to thousands of degrees. Then about 950 to 980 this uh, degree centigrade, this graphite surface will begin to burn off. So we can quite easily make something here that we can heat up to 900 degrees centigrade, no problem at all. 
So we're talking here something where we could make a radiator, a radiator out of it, or, or even a cooker. We could make a, a stove out of this, uh, and it could be kiln, uh, a kiln liner out of it as well. There's just tons of things you could do with this. It's, it's really cool. So the different substrates um, change the temperature range in which we can apply this um, graphene heating element. And that's what we've got here. We've got a graphene heating element. Now, obviously, connecting the power straight up to the um, contact points is, is acceptable when you're only looking at something like 12 volts and the heating rate is so slow it's not going to spontaneously combust uh, and hurt you. Um, but obviously for something where we need to um, apply 240 volts to it and we're going to have a much more rapid increase in temperature, then we're going to need some more um, kind of control. Now I have some bits and pieces here. Um, what I've got here is a two alarm uh, thermocoupling controlled temperature sensor. Now this cost me um, £30, which is about $45. Uh, and it comes complete as a kit, so you get your little temperature control sensor, uh, you get your thermocouple, which we've got here, and you get your um, high power um, silicon relay, which we've got here. So using uh, those three components, we're actually pretty much ready to build the housing. And um, while this straight up into the mains, that is put uh, 240 volts through it. Put that through the temperature controller, put the sensor onto there, and then wire it through that with an on-off switch. So I've yet to do that, but um, obviously I wanted you to see uh, what this is a graphene ink. So this is the other thing that I did, as I made a graphene ink. This graphene ink can be uh, applied to this surface, and the carrier of it is actually ethanol. So it will burn off uh, quite easily. There is a um, alkyd binder in there so it will stick to just about absolutely anything so we paint that on in the same way that you would apply any paint and then you need to calcinate it at about three to four hundred degrees in an oven to burn off all those binders and all the alcohol to leave you with the graphene layer so that's what i've got that's where i am at the moment we have our graphene ink we have our graphene heating elements of three different types and what i'm going to do next is um, work out the control circuitry and the insulation for this. So um, I'm kind of getting there. Uh, I've got the essence of it there, I think. Uh, and I really, really do like this. And so hopefully, so do you.